Welcome back guys, and it is time to get into our grand finals. It's actually happened, ladies and gentlemen. We are gonna get our ZVT coming our way. And it's gonna be Nux versus Paul. So we got our map picks done and dusted, and it is going to be Nightshade, Eternal Empire, Golden Walls, and Blackrum, as well as Purity and Industry. Map bands are the down two down below. I always honestly forget the name of every dream till I remember it. And the other one gonna be Zen uh band up as well. Anyway though, it is gonna be time to go go for the good luck, have fun. Both sides eager to get things started. And let's get into this one. For Nightshade though, this is looking like a really strong map pick for Nux. He's in, he knows that, that Nightshade is a map that he can really dominate on and go for some really early aggression with either his Zerglings or his Roaches. In the meantime, for Paul, he picked up maps like Eternal Empire as well as Simulacrum, allowing him the space as well as the areas for him to really go for the siege on in in a way that he feels accustomed to in a way that he really can have a potential advantage but seems like our game is already getting ready to go let's get into this one game number one nightshade is in our books so welcome ladies and gentlemen to the grand finals of our quarantined tournament introducing first the man who has uh, set a path of destruction, not only in the local scene, but also in the regional one. It is the blue Zerg that is uh, Nux. And his opponents on the bottom right. It's a man to mid the legend himself. The guy who can destroy hard drives with a single boot. The man who is working on a different machine. It's the Terran of Paul. So welcome ladies and gentlemen, we are on a best of 5 in the last match here in our quarantined tournament. It has been a fun romp for the past 2 days and it seems like we are going to be winding on Dan. As we said before, this is going to be a shorter bracket with the smaller population but the games have really been absolute classics. It really goes to show that both sides, the winners really having the class advantage, having so many tools of their arsenal to really face off against the opposition. All about two zeros here and now Nux taking down both Phoenix as well as Saipa and Paul in the meantime taking care of Extinct. But let's talk about the builds right here right now. Hashi first here courtesy of Nux. Paul gonna be like okay he's going Hash first. I can play macro. I can actually play the macro and look for harassment using the Reaper. Story time again. We already told you guys the story about Paul and his uh, hard drive but if I if I remember correctly, Paul really has basically had a resurgence, a little more resurgence. Besides Nux, of course, having really uh, like a golden era, a renaissance. Paul has also been uh, one of these players that have have been a little laying low, but then came back in full force last last year. If I remember correctly, if I'm correct with that one, but. He has really impressed, he has really ground on back up to the ladder. And right here, right now, he's facing off against Nux in the Grand Finals. Nux in the meantime, looking to take a few more crowns here and there, using the time given during quarantine period to really brush up on his StarCraft game. It hasn't really worked out really well for Nux. He's been getting some really solid improvements all throughout, and he's been very decisive in what he wants to do. A little bit of a difference compared to his run from last year. As you said before though, why we host local tournaments? It's all for improvement. You're not going to get too far if you only stay on the local, but it is a good way to not only build a community, as, but as well really gauge your impact into an upcoming regional, gauge your impact into an upcoming event and find your place in the PH ladder. Anyway though, let's talk about what is going on in the game. 1-1 set up here by Paul already, pretty standard stuff. He loses the Reaper yet again in a 
Wasteful fashion, highly unfortunate there for Paul, but he will try to make things up with the Hellions instead. Earlier on in Everdream, he was able to cook Mr. Kent in a barbecue and extinct, pretty much going down in flames there. But in the meantime, a timing attack here from Nux already, sending out these Zerglings with a metabolic boost, almost gets us around on one. And this is what Nightshade is all about, speed versus speed. You can see the Hellions though having to stop in the surround, connecting onto one already. Nux giving chase, truly trying to get the KO. 200 minerals looking to go down the drain. Never mind, only one of them gonna fall on over and reinforcements have arrived. Paul now gonna be living life in the fast lane. So right here, right now, we are having our TVZ in the finals. Yet again, we have a sandwich. TVZ at the start, TVZ at the very end. And pretty much factors in the TVC. The battle cruiser can be pretty important. In the meantime, Nux still gonna go for the scout. And does he see the Banshee? Come on, that it's gonna be very, very close. But one thing that Nux can really scout out is the fact that the tech lab is glowing. So it's going for an upgrade. Usually that is a Banshee cloak. But does Nux realize this? Did he actually spot things out? Or was he paying attention somewhere else on the map? The shots keeping on coming that one Marine really trying to pop the balloon in the first place. And where is the Banshee in this instance? Where is it going to be flooding on over? It is able to hide in plain sight. It's by the wrap already. How will Nux respond? He still hasn't gone for the Spore Crawler. And actually, this might be an opportunity here for Pull. Seems like while Nux was able to go for a drive on by with his vision, he wasn't really able to see exactly what it was. But finally, here comes the Spore Crawler to realize the situation. going to be looking to try and find a way to shut down that upcoming Banshee. Two of them actually, in fact, gonna be coming on over. Nux now spotting that out completely, coming his way. And for our green Terran, what will Paul do? Now that he has been exposed, he might not even bother trying to go for those bases. Instead, use them to clear the ground. Make sure that those Zerglings cannot get close whatsoever. Overseer, even used up by Nux already, making sure he has even mobile detection just in case. It's gonna be a queen hit squad into this one. Here goes to show Nux trying to optimize on his scenario. Seems like that little bit of a delay was just the fact that he knew the Banshee Cloak wasn't be gonna be available yet and he still had time waiting for the energy to come in the first place. Nux though, intercepting already with the Queen's Hellions from Paul, trying to move around the map but to no good degree. And right now you can really see Nux in control of everything under his sun. He's enjoying the bases, he's enjoying his creep spread, and he's enjoying exactly how he's positioned. Paul in the meantime is trying to play the aggression game strong. Pushing on forward, gonna be a very difficult defensive stance here for Paul if Nux gets the overrun and gets on to pressure this third base. Anyway, though, Zergling still onto the field, and what is gonna be Nux up to? Three base into the Spire, pretty standard stuff here, and now from our blue Zerg, gonna be a good way to deal, apply pressure. And honestly, with all the Hellions into the field, rather than the Marines, well, there isn't gonna be much anti-air in the first place. Ball in the flip side, though, decides to go for a bio approach. He is gonna go for combat shield and the plus one, plus one, try to go for the timing. But who will get there first? That's gonna be the real question into this one. Spire versus Barracks. That's gonna be a fun fight here. But in the meantime, it's time to fly on over with the Medivac. Moving around the map, trying to see where it can get a drop on. But in the meantime, Queen's already in position. Does Nux know that this is coming in this direction? Sees it out. Gets the shots on. Paul immediately evacuating with those Marines. Trying to get on away instead. Popping that step back as well. The plus one onto the armor. Gonna be coming online very, very soon. But this is a mass of marines that he needs anyway though here comes the upgrades coming out basically at the same time combat shield gonna be coming his way soon as well so these marines gonna be looking to pack a punch throughout the game but nux increasing his defenses more bane links gonna be a good way to mitigate the numbers there from paul Still though, Paul, looking ready to go for the fight. He turns things around, decides to play the Hellbats instead. Gonna be a tanky approach as well as allowing Medivax to go for the heal. But right here, right now, it's gonna be a big burst! Bombs connecting the green arms, killing everything in plain sight! And Nux mopping the floor on that upcoming attack. Can Paul get anything done in behind? Here comes the Mutalis fleet flying on over yet again. The Sonics are abound and the screeches from those worms. Gonna be pressuring the left hand side. 
Overall though, it seems like there's still gonna be a little bit of fight left from Paul. The Baning Bust gonna be able to get some really good damage, but the fight isn't over yet. Can't really call up who's gonna have the advantage here, but this hatchery might fall in just a bit. No other way for Nux to come on through yet again, but finally, the middle is gonna be able to get in position and help things out. That he just wants to give chase. The afterburner is gonna be burning on down very, very soon. Overseer gonna be there as well to scout things out. And the focus fire on to the Overseer from those Marines. Heals now, keeping on coming. The Paul knows that these guys cannot come on back. And the Bailings cleaning everything up on the ground, slamming on down yet again. Everything torn apart. And on to the base we go. It really goes to show if you play on the aggression, it's so much easier for the aggression thump to come to you. Anyway, though, the Adam Missile turrets mitigating and fending off those villas in the first place. And we've got some vehicle plating to make sure these benefits are just a tad a bit more tanky. For now though, it seems like Nox having the lead, having all these bases up and running, and he's looking to maximize his profits. Already on 75 workers, he can decide to commit onto an army very, very soon with the amount of drones he has in the first place. Just making sure that he can actually go for the 200-200 and surprise his opponents with one fell swoop. Anyway, on the, on the flip side, Paul trying to go for a fourth base, making sure that he's uh, gonna be able to keep up with Nux as much as possible. As plus two now, gonna be next on the list. But will it be enough to really try and face off against these many pain links? Because Nux is still keeping up with the pressure on both the ground as well as the air. Mutal is swooping on over from the south side, keeping things up with the pressure, with the damage on those mineral lines. And 23 SCVs already falling on over onto the first two bases. What happened? What happened there? Uh, Insta pause from Paul. We got a. We got something going on suddenly. What happened. What happened? What happened? Very surprising. Even I got surprised because we were talking about the action and that kind of messes up the micro. Nux does have a fleet there. Okay. Three, two, one. And let's go. The mule is gonna be flying on at a little bit of the temple being broken, and Paul gonna be able to come on back into this one. I think for Paul, since he's not playing on his rig, he probably doesn't have a certain hotkey bound, or he couldn't find the button. Because if he's a more of a PC player over a laptop, and he doesn't have the formation that he needs, but right here, right now, GG gonna get called. Paul unable to keep up with Nux, and that is gonna be the victory. Seems like the pause that he was just trying to make sure that he was still gonna be able to go for at least a little bit of a fight, but Nux just had way too much, and when the bailing started rolling on in yet again, that is probably gonna be game, set, and match. So game number one taken there by Nux. It seems like he was just able to fend off whatever Paul was trying to do in the first place, and there you go, the Zerg. Swarm just able to really run across the map and get to those bases, get the damage done. You see, like, it was Paul going for the attack, but suddenly, Nux was already at his doorstep with the aggressive expansion Paul took. And with Nux having really all the elements of his composition working on all cylinders, well, it was a very successful fanfare there for our Zerg player. So next map now on the list will be Eternal Empire. This is uh, Paul's pick instead. And we'll see if we can get a point back against Nux into this one. Right here, right now though, it seems like he's getting ready to go. Making sure that everything is found, everything is fine and dandy on his new rig. Big shoutouts though again to Mr. Mizzle for really allowing that one to happen. Allowing the tournament to happen and trying to help things out. Yeah, I'm going to up. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Uh, go fix. Go fix first. Fix it first, yeah. We'll make sure. <laughs> we'll, we'll let them fix it first and we'll take a very short break, guys. We'll be right back. We we'll make sure that Paul is ready to go for a matchup like this. Still has a lot of chances for more maps potentially to play in this best of five, but Nux with a 1 0 lead. We'll see how this is gonna go in just a bit.
So welcome back guys, and seems like Paul is ready to go A-OK. -okay. Let's get into this one. Nux versus Paul, game number two coming our way. And this is going to be Eternal Empire, as we've said. So, for the second bout in this best of five, Paul is going to be trying to find a way to really dent the armor that is the composition of Nux. He's been having really a bunch of comps that he's been very familiar with, very comfortable with, really, really playing into the meta and standard stuff from both players, but Nux having the lead, having the advantage. We'll see if it's going to be the same case here on Eternal Empire as we introduce our players on the bottom left of Eternal Empire, it's gonna be the unrelenting, unyielding Red Zerg Nux. And his opponent on the top right, it's going to be the multitasking, app slaying, top right green Terran Paul. So Paul just informing us that a few apps here and there really bothering him on that first game, highly unfortunate. And that's why he requested for a pause. We made sure that he is A-OK -okay right here, right now. And we are going to be getting our games with no interruptions on both ends. Because we want to make sure that these two guys can really play as best as can be. We're giving them the best server possible. We're giving them the time to get ready. And right here, right now, making sure that Paul even able to actually play into the tournament. Huge, huge, big sacrifices here from our organizer. But hey! Let's get into the matchup instead. Rax now coming online here for Mr. Paul. Gonna be very, very standard into this one. Hatchery first yet again from Nux. He feels like with Paul playing a standard game, he can also focus on going for the macro intensive style instead of really trying to pressure his opponent too much. He also wants to play it safe and sound. He's only up one map. You can go for the cheese when you are on a match point if you have a commanding lead like that. And we'll see if Nux is going to be able to establish dominance in this one as Paul gets the scouting information that he needs. Sees the hatchery first. He's like, okay, I'm fine. I can play the same way I did last game. So the real question here and now, ladies and gentlemen, is how will Paul respond? We saw him go for the bio approach earlier on with the Marines and the Hellbats. There were many instances where he really had a chance against Nux, but at the same time, it just didn't pan out. A few missed spikers here and there, and potentially really those things getting in his way, hampering his play. But now no excuses, this is truly going to be the Grand Finals here and now. Best of 5 action. And Paul looking to set up a bunker. He's trying to potentially bluff that he's going for the proxy. And in the meantime, Nux going to be sending a few things over. But this is way too far off to really pressure Nux in the first place. Instead, it's just going to be a bunker in the way, preventing an early third here from Nux. And it seems like Azur going to be looking to the side. And he's going to try to go for the punish instead and pressure his opponent. Anyway though, Paul this time getting some really good Reaper Micro on. Four kills already, trying to get on away. Staying alive, and this time not gonna get taken down by a queen. He bounces on over closer to him in the first place. Still though, it seems like Nux gonna be looking for scouting information, looking to make sure he knows exactly what Paul is doing. Carapace gonna be the upgrade of choice alongside the metabolic boost. He didn't go for any roaches right now early on. It really is just gonna be about staying with the Zerglings and potentially moving over to tier 2 tech with all of that under his belt. But by this point in time, for Paul, he is gonna get his double Hellions yet again. Marine gonna be there as well. And again, it seems like it is gonna be all about the barracks here for our green Terran. Now, the real question here is what will Paul focus on? We saw a lot of Marines earlier on. Will he get the Marauders this time? Will he complement things with the Widow Mine? Or will it even be ghosts coming our way? Still, the Marine, a very, very cost efficient unit, as here comes more and more of that scouting. Nox knowing exactly what's coming his way. Notices that's a pretty late starport, so this has to be bio in his sights. All about splash damage right now, all about making sure that he can get the damage done onto the clusters of Marines. He's gonna be looking to fawn on over against the Zerg. He already has the Bailing stats for sure. He can try to find other things along the way. Lurkus can be pretty potent if he does make it to that area. But for Nux right now, he's decided to stay on the macro. We'll go for a third base instead. Realizing the fact that it'll take a little bit longer for Paul to actually build up the army he wants to try and go for the one fell swoop. And at the same time, he's waiting for these upgrades. So Nux is happy to take an expansion in behind and basically try and take the lead from there using money as its source. 
Anyway though. Them back now coming online we are gonna get a tech lab for the factory as well will we see a lift on up though it's a siege tax to complement actually the potential marine push here from paul very very old school reminiscent of starcraft one you got your medics or in this case medivacs you got your siege tax you got your marines and that is a composition you can rely on Speaking of reliability though, Zerglings moving around the map, making sure that everything is going to be fine. And Danny Paul though, in the meantime, does have the Great Wall of Supply Depots and does not see the Medivacs coming his way so close, but apparently it's just at the tail end edge. Paul in the meantime, running all the way with these Hellions and oh, Nux is actually going to spot things out. It's going to be the Marines dropping on that instead to assassinate the Zerglings, saving the Hellions from a gruesome fate. And here comes the march on forward. How will Nux respond? He doesn't have a spore crawler as of yet for any flyers. So he is going to be looking to rely on through grit. Even with all the healing from above. Anyway though. Seems like Paul waiting at the wings. Queens right now. Going for the hammer on. In the meantime, Marines popping that spin back. Starter step. Very, very important to just keep distance against the Zerg. And without the creep here and now, it seems like Nux at a little bit of a disadvantage in a fight like this. Here we go there. Here comes more of North the top up. The Marines just waiting on the outside. Siege tank right now. Trying to make sure that there isn't going to be any run on by whatsoever. And immediately, another Rax coming our way. Marines are only the start, but they are also potentially the end. But speaking of the end, the look at all of those bodies hitting the floor. And even the Medivac's gonna go down. Highly unfortunate here for Paul. He was in the lead in that army count, but with everything getting torn apart, Nux finding the opening gets the creep front on, and now he's gonna have a staging ground on the lower platform. Speaking of platform though, again plus one plus one on melee and carapace. Will we get the same thing? Will we see some spire shenanigans here from Nux? Seems like it's a little different though. Hydralis then actually. Courtesy of our Zerg player, Can and Paul gonna ask for a pause yet again. Like we said, seems like he's been having a few issues here and there. But at the same time, he has been able to be successful in a few instances, in a few nuances with those drop plays with the Marines. But it seems like there are really these times where he's slipping and potentially that has something to do with the rig that he's using. Anyway though, production tab really going in favor of Nux right now. He is going to go for the Bane Links, and he is going to go for the Zerg Links with the plus one. So basically, going to be a very, very strong composition on the ground. Look to just destroy everything in sight. 114 to 101 in terms of max supply, but the worker count heavily in favor of Nux right now. That's three bases saturated, looking to get a fort very, very soon gonna be really really potent if the zerg and the drones can really keep up with the economy and keep the swarm going even after they all die anyway though as we are waiting on right here right now guys how do you think how how has been the tournament experience how did you feel playing in the tournament from both yesterday and today and what do you think has been the best game so far in our series we'll be waiting on though for Paul to get ready to go and we will see how it's gonna be for Paul because he is really just trying to figure things out on his side he has shown that he has this tendency to play onto the buy roll and just enjoy spamming those Marines and hitting that step back and go for that combat shield making sure that all the damage is gonna be done by the most basic of all units Seems like though we are for the minute 20 seconds ago. Let me pop up on Discord. For the band, how do you do that? Sure, okay. I think we need to rewind. So we'll be right back, guys. We'll figure things out.
Okay, guys, we are back. Quick little explanation. So, for for Paul, uh, he had a number of issues again, and we were discussing if we could actually go for a quick little rewind, and we did so. So, uh, Nux was okay with it, and I think it's a good way to go about things. We, we should add this rule in into future, into future editions of this. And potentially we can go for like one rewind per match. So yeah, we'll uh, quickly, quick, quick heads up. Uh, just, just one rewind per match. Okay, match. Okay. So, so should be no more issues, huh? Okay, five, four, three, two. And one. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna be getting into the action. Look at that. Pretty snazzy. Completely snazzy. Yeah, we're gonna be backing on that. So, what happened in the past? In the edition that didn't work, we need a score screen though, and Nux with a one point advantage. So, what happened here is by this point in time, Paul was immediately unresponsive in, in an area like this. Nux took advantage, thought that Paul was not uh, was busy macroing on up but apparently Paul was just not able to move for like a full minute and we are gonna let slide we are gonna let it happen then it's okay sure we'll see how it's gonna go and we made a, a quick little ruling so into the future guys we will only allow potential rewinds on a, a match basis and oh the bailey's gonna get the kill either way who cares about the pass it's still gonna be the same result it's just a different way to die there you go. Seems like we are losing a little frames. Hopefully everything is a-okay in this setup. Just making sure everything is gonna be fine. And Danny right here right now, like, oh no, it's a little bit of an issue on my end now. But it is what it is. By this point in time, Zergling is gonna be going over to the north hand side, looking to make sure that everything is gonna be pretty potent into this one. Creep on over as well from Nux Ball in the meantime. He's holding that Orbital Candle oh Man on the way. And he's gonna go for drop in behind. Hydra's still no gonna come on up quickly. Evacuating. It seems like that's what the Hydra's is gonna be all about. It's all about making sure that he can get damaged and all about making sure that he can take care of those Metagraphs flying on over. And hopefully our server does reconnect quite soon. We're just gonna be making sure. And that is going to be working on our end. Seems like a, always an issue. Always an issue with any kind of pH nets to begin with. Yeah, quick little speed test in overall. Plus one, plus one though. Coming online. The show must go on. And if it has to be the replay, then so be it. Paul going to be able to get his plus one going already. In the meantime, here comes Nux surrounding the Queens yet again. Uh, the Marines rather, yet again. And the action going to keep on going right here, right now. And in the meantime, see how this is going to fly here for Nux. He's getting more and more bases. How is the stream, guys? How is it going right here, right now? Making sure everything is going to be A-OK -okay on our front. Finally, we are back in a proper setup. And it seems like everything is looking to be a okay. So the Hydra list then gonna be double pumping out those upgrades in Q, making sure the range as well as the speed for those Hydras gonna allow them to get into the position that they want. And Nux gonna be bring in the bailing bombs yet again. Zerg so running around as much as possible, making sure that he gets a map vision as well as control of everything outside the basis of the Terran. So welcome back ladies and gentlemen, if you only did reconnect now or something, as the Marine's gonna be down below from Paul, he gets the shots on, pops the stim back, and just eviscerates that Overlord pretty, pretty quickly. But in the meantime, melee plus one as well as Carapace gonna make these Zerglings and Bailings even more tanky. And speed on these Bailings is gonna be very, very potent to get this round on, get the takedowns. The only thing that Nux needs to worry about really are the medibaths here from Paul. He's been pretty effective at getting the load on and making sure that everyone is hopped in and out. But here comes the Bailing bus in to the second base. It's gonna be a drop on down. Bailing bombs knocking things over. And in the meantime, in behind, it seems like it's gonna be the Cascade on over yet again. Bailing in behind, trying to get around these Zerglings, but they are getting the collision on. And it's like a proper funnel, honestly, for Paul. He's able to make things happen. This time, no Overlord gonna be able to get close to the base. 
we are by the 10 minute mark right here right now hydras gonna be next on the list and it seems like that is good what nux is up to into this one overall though huge hit there from nux he's taking the lead on to that work account yet again how many workers have fallen already 18 in that volley especially on that natural by this point in time though another aggressive assault here from paul he likes really pushing his lines and going all the way with his bases but right here right now nux running around the map yet again it really is gonna be the desert sands being kicked by these zerglings and these are a lot of zerglings right now the marine trying to get all the way no better paths to go for the save in this instance though, Supply Depot trying to make a funnel yet again. Here comes the Swarm! And it's looking pretty mighty scary for poor Paul. A lot of things flashing on the map. It really is Nux trying to force out a lot of attention away from Paul and the Forefront. Right here, right now, here comes the Bailing Drops yet again. They're rolling on in. Do, do get a few frags here and there. Two SCVs go down and a little bit of splash damage. In the meantime, Paul already wary of what's to come. Leave some marines up on top, trying to really fend off any overlords in the first place. And the thing about the ventral sacks, it does change the model. So Nox knows that Paul knows what he has in store for him yet again. Anyway, though, seems like the marine defense force. Okay, we're looking for the attack in instead. In the meantime, still not on the main base. Don't be dropping it down onto that third and 12. 15, 16 SEVs go down in one false swoop. Even the aggressive base gonna go down. And things looking really tired again for Paul. Same plan. Distract his opponent with the Baneling drops. And destroy anything in front with his army. Nox in the meantime though. Losing a bunch of overlords and will get dropped on. Tit for tat scenario. Here comes the swarm though. This is early. He's coming on back yet again with that speed. And Nux looking really happy with his positioning right now. He's able to hug the southern side. And he's able to get some really good creeps spread on. Paul in the meantime running out of money to try and keep the SCV flow going. And be very very difficult right now for Paul to try and play catch up. But that's what the mules are for here for the Terran. He has made a bigger shape. It's not just the wall. It really is the three corner approach from the supply depots. And the funny thing here is Paul loses all these supply depots, so he has even more. He has so many supply depots right now just trying to defend himself, trying to make sure that he has a base bunkered up. And again, guys, we just had to go for a quick little rewind after a few issues here and there. But Paul now looking to snipe a few more of his overlords yet again. Nuffs in the meantime, turning things around. It's just not unfortunate. There is going to be no evacuation of the other three. Medivac's gonna be able backing on out instead. And right here, right now, the western side of the map gonna be all looking red. Here comes Nux though, looking to come on forward. Ball in the meantime, scouts things out with the Viking. And it's time to get out of dodge and time to get on out of here. It seems like the game though has slowed down to a little bit of a crawl. Right here, right now, Nux is still on a pretty much maxed out approach and he will decide to go for the plus 3, get the Adrenal Glance as well. Gonna be a bad fight though here for Paul, he is outnumbered and gonna be outgunned. Here comes the Bailings yet again, and they don't care anymore, they're gonna go for the plus supply, and Evo's gonna go down. Sure though, it does get a little bit of tanking action, and speaking of the tanks, here they come yet again, but still, the Bailings rolling on and rolling everything over, both sides losing so much. But Paul looking worse for wear because that's going to be the third base blown on up. GG is called Nux with the victory. That is the cash flow there from Nux keeping things up. And the Bailings keeping on with the pressure. Able to destroy everything in sight. That was game number two there and then ladies and gentlemen. And even with the issues, even with the resets. Paul still unable to get that victory. Nux in the meantime showing his true form and now is only one map away from taking this whole series, taking this whole tournament. Both players though have been guaranteed of course to get a little bit of the prize. 1000 gonna come on over to our first placer and then 500 for our second placer. So Golden Wall gonna be next on the list and in this map it's gonna be er very interesting as we really haven't seen this map much throughout the two days of tournaments it's gonna be also a good way to gauge how these two guys can be creative onto this upcoming map for Paul he can't really go for those drops in behind but we have seen Nux do the same play the drop game as strong as possible and Golden Wall might be the cash 
king that Nux is looking for to take this whole series, to take his whole tournament by storm. It seems like though we are going to be getting into game number three out of five. Will this be the last one? Will Paul be able to try and force out a potential reverse sweep to take the whole thing? We will find out in just a bit as it's time to move on over into Golden Wall. Let's talk about the map as soon as we get on in because there are lots of parts of this area, of this map, of this whole, whole play area to talk about and discuss. So welcome back ladies and gentlemen and here we go. Is this gonna be it? Is this gonna be the ending? of our tournaments as we get into this one it's the best of five with nux two maps ahead introducing first on the western corner of golden wall it is going to be the one facing ease making sure that he's gonna be able to dominate when necessary it's the blue zerg nux and his opponents on the eastern side of golden wall looking west looking to make sure that this is gonna be a new frontier for the Terran Dominion, it's the green Terran that is Paul. So welcome back ladies and gentlemen and Hatchery first yet again here from Nux all about macro here and now from our blue zerg and we were able to see that in full force on Eternal Empire Nux really playing the balancing app playing as many bases as he could extending his lines and looking around for opportunities in every different facet Banelings inside overlords Banelings inside overlords on another angle and a number of Banelings really signature there for Nux to run you over so interesting enough, we haven't seen much of the Orochas here from Nux in the Grand Finals. It really was just in the Zergling Baneling focus and then a complementary unit. We got the Muta and then we got the Hydra. Will we see the Ultralis come on back? Highly unlikely, but Paul in the meantime having basically an idea of what Nux has been up to. Now the real question is, will Nux change things up? He can really surprise Paul by this point with a Roach Warren opening with a Roach Warren timing and look to destroy him from there with a different composition. But Paul has been touted and known as a Bio player, so you won't really want to go Roaches against all these Marines, especially if he plays the Stimpak game strong. Enemy though here on Golden Wall already, second base built up by our Zerg player. In the meantime, Paul, Orbital Command is ready to go, trying to keep up with the economy. Metabolic boost though, gonna be a good part of the arsenal here for Mr. Nux. Paul in the meantime, really trying to get away with the SCV and we'll hide behind the Vespine Geyser as it's time for the Peeling Raper. Nux unable to get anything out of that one, didn't have enough money to turn it into a hatchery. That is all she wrote for that one worker. For now. Nux looking to play a little bit on the defensive end. He gets Queen just in time to fend off the Reaper coming in the forefront. In the meantime, it's gonna be the factory coming on. That's refined and we're gonna be there as well. Pretty standard stuff yet again from our two players. And so about our two players, since they are really on the high part of the ladder, you can really expect that these guys knowing how to play the meta to such a strong degree. The meta is a meta for a reason, and the meta is pretty much an optimal composition that you can run in the first place. They have shown though that they are very well versed on their build orders, they are very well versed in exactly what they want to do. And Carapace now, gonna be the upgrade for Nox yet again. It seems like for Nux, Carapace really is one of those key upgrades when he doesn't feel like he's going to be able to get the proper scout onto the opposing base. And I feel that this is a really good investment that Nux is taking in many, many situations. Especially for the fact that if his opponent really stays on bio, he's not going to need the extra gas until he keeps things up with the Banelings into this one. Anyway though, Zerglings get to chase down will lead to a takedown. Nux in the meantime seeing everything that's going on in the map making sure that all the nooks and crannies, all the ramps, everything that he could probably hide something in gonna get spotted out in the first place. Still though, it's time to go for Cloak and did Nux see that one out? That's gonna be the real question. He saw the star part floating on over but he moved on to the command center side after the fact. And right here right now the marines trying to just fend that overlord off. In the meantime, Laird second coming our way. Here comes the Baneling Nest as well. And seems like Nux on a tried and tested composition he's so so comfortable with. He still doesn't want to play the 
offensive status though he likes playing on his own side he's like making sure that his bases are easy to defend and he doesn't go for the gold he goes for the north hand expansion and basically that means he's gonna be hugging this wall hugging this side of the map as much as possible by this point in time those floor crawlers gonna be coming our way it seems like yes it really is just Nox understanding the timing of how long the banshee cloak comes as well as how long the banshee will be cloaked in in the first place as it comes on out speaking of the banshee cloak though it is gonna be done and dusted and we'll see if it's gonna work out here for paul seems like a very comfortable unit strong against ground and just destroying everything with those missiles in the first place and something like SimCity though here for Paul, engineering base, gonna be going on into the doubles. He's gonna be looking to double pump up those upgrades, it's, it's time for more and more of these barracks to come online. And really Bio versus Bio right here, right now. Zerg versus Terran, Marines versus Zerglings, probably an iconic matchup to begin with. Anyway though, it seems like Paul looking for a potential third. He already has the Orbital Command set on up and he is getting his upgrades at proper times at proper places making sure he does have a pretty solid balance of everything that's going on and with the fact that he's willing to actually bring in a ability just to harass his opponent well be a good way to go about things anyway though Paul actually deciding to play the gold in this map, it really makes a lot of sense. It's a lot of minerals coming your way, even though you can only get one gas. But it does go to show the philosophy here of these two players. For Nux, he likes to play on the north hand side. He likes to play on the defensive end and attack from there when ready. In the meantime, here for Paul, he's just gonna try to make as much money as possible. And he honestly, might just be looking to try and find a new home. Anyway, though, Banelink Speed. It'll be next on the list for Nux. It really is the keys to the kingdom here for Nux. Zerglings, Banelinks, and whatever he likes. This time, it's gonna be Mutas yet again. And it's a pretty good idea, because the whole south side of the map, basically, you can't get chased, even though the eastern side will allow you to still get hit through the proximity of the ground to the map walls. And here comes the creep spread. Nux really not taking any chances into this one. Making sure he has a speed advantage. Plus one gonna be coming online soon here for our Zerg. But in the meantime, this can be an opportunity here for the Terran to actually try and go for a counterattack. Paul. Right here, right now, having a number of Marines marching on forward. In the meantime, plus one right now. Finally gonna be done and dusted. And these marines uh, looking to pack a punch, trying to crawl on forward. How will Nux respond? He does have these Zerglings, he does have these Banelings, gonna be able to help them out along the way. But Helibat's gonna be there as well, and this is gonna be a choke where these Banelings are gonna be very, very effective. But I digress. It seems like Nux has taken that frontal base, getting that rich mineral field, making sure that he can optimize in his money. Scandal comes on at. Trying to clear up the creep tumors, but hey, here comes the swarm yet again. The Zergings and the Banelings trying to roll on in into the back line, trying to make things happen. A few Marines do go down, but good tanking there from the Hellbats. And it seems like it's going to be a barbecue in order, but no one home to actually take care of the cooking. Queens instead sent into the front lines. One is going to go down pretty much instantaneously. Here comes the Banelings. It's yet again the Marines! Just turning into puddles of acid one more time. Yuta's up above, and this is looking absolutely unrelenting from Nux. He's not even fully committing on a huge army. He's getting 24 Zergs right here, right now. But at the same time, he's still in the lead at the super mark of 75 workers. Again, though, the fight continues. Paul right now, now letting up, really trying to make sure that both sides are going to be into the meat grinder. And anyway, the push comes to shove. Onto the eastern side, trying to make it through on that golden wall. It seems like it's just not going to be case. Paul finally going to be able to offend and defend. By this point in time though. Marching on forward yet again. Still, Paul is only on three bases while Nux is on four. He also has an overlord in position just to make sure that he will know when his opponent is a base alongside him. Top up very important for those marines, making sure those band-aids not gonna go to use at any points. 
Anyway, right here, right now, Medivax might get caught into this one. Overseer gonna fall on over as well. Baneling, so pushing on forward. And that is gonna be a big slam yet again. Going around, trying to get rid of the SCVs. Good Cascade on, unable to get the big hits. And one, two, three, four Marines do go down into that one. Let me toss on now, plus two, plus two, with four are starting base composition. And it has been a beautiful affair here from Nux. Really making some value using these banelings. But right here, right now, on every on uh, Golden Wall rather, it really has turned into a pretty even slobber knocker of a fight. Now it's Paul actually on the offensive, and here goes the banelings yet again, just blowing everything up one last time, but he's not getting the full value, the full advantage in these matchups. So overall, Paul doing a pretty good job trying to mitigate Nux, who is at a significant worker count, but in terms of that army, pretty even th on things up. The real question right here right now is if Paul can keep things against the Zerg. He needs to make sure that he shuts down a form of means of production and mineral transportation due to the fact that he's gonna be probably dying out the cold out there in the open as here comes the Banelings yet again destroying everything in sight! Nux defending one more time the same way and the screams of those Marines gonna be a beautiful symphony for our Zerg player. Anyway though, more and more Marines, more and more Medivacs. Seems like Paul doesn't want to give up. It's exactly what he wants to build in the first place and he's gonna make it happen. But Nux right now looking for the killing blow or at least a little bit of harassment along the way. On to the third, fourth base actually potentially here for our boy Paul. And here comes the bulk of the army flying on by. Real is trying to get on the way. Zergings very very expendable making sure that they will get out of dodge and stay alive. Right here, right now. Here comes another skirmish. This game has really turned basically into a fight on very, very many fronts. Look at that. Eventually, Paul able to bring everyone together. But it's looking really dicey as plus three is going to be coming online soon for those targets. Adrenal Glance is going to be such a good way to get some DPS on going as well. At the same time, this does confirm that high tech is ready to go already for side of Nux. The screams of the Marines gonna be echoing into the wind. The golden wall gonna be overpopulated into this one. Phoenix now slamming on down yet again. And Nux right slowly but surely getting a more and more significant advantage. GG well played is called. Eventually it's just not enough. Paul cannot handle all the Banelings and we have a champion. Nux is our inaugural tournament winner for the SCPH community. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Banelings absolute MVPs. And Nux was just so, so unrelenting. He just never let up. He just never stopped going at his opponents. And that is going to be our session for the past two days. Nux with a 3 zero victory against Paul and he did such a magnanimous job making things happen taking him down not just once not just twice but three times in a row and being such a sport about it even allowing the a little bit of that reset into the game due to the fact that they know that Paul is struggling right now but real shouts out to Paul as well for being able to participate and putting up such a good fight especially on that last map but that is basically gonna be it for us today. Let's check out the map score one last time. And Nux with the 3-0 victory. Nightshade, Eternal Empire, and Golden Wall all getting won by our Zerg player. He was the first one featured, and he is the last one out. GG well played, congrats Nux. Taking our first tournament by storm. And hopefully, we can get a few new ones going into the future so we have learned a lot of lessons overall in our sessions we have learned a lot of things and we will be moving forward if we are going to be able to get a little more funding and a little more time 
into making things better, making sure that we can really provide for our players, and at the same time, making sure that everyone who does sign up are, are able to join and enjoy their time. But this has been the SCPH Quarantined Tournament, and that has been your Grand Finals yesterday. Shenanigans taking the gold nine bracket today, Nux winning out on the Masters bracket. And that is all she wrote. Special shoutouts to our sponsors, DLS Mizzle, as well as Viagster for the prize pool slash the overlays. Big shoutouts to Extinct for yesterday's co-casting. And thank you guys for tuning on in. Shoutouts to the SCPH community for all banding together and making things happen. I'd love to do this again with you all in the chat, with you all in the group chats, with you all in the group itself. And it has been a very, very fun time here. Hopefully, you guys had a good one as well. I've been Dex, and it's going to be time to say goodbye so long. I will be hosting a tournament again tomorrow though for the Aodzai, and if you are interested in that, feel free to sign on up. I do have a reg link somewhere on my page, facebook.com slash daxcast. And if you want to support the stream, you know, hit that follow, hit that sub. It would mean a lot for your support. But I hope you guys enjoyed your time here on the stream and in the tournaments. And we'll see you guys in the next one. This has been the SCPH Quarantine Tournament.